Hey family, how are you doing? It's your brother, Brian Mayor D's. Peace to you, peace to your home, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you, I, and they are building. Peace also to the God of forces, the great spirit above the mother below. This is MT Marathi. I want to first start off by paying tribute to my big brother who went to join the ancestors um, on Friday. Uh, and sort of um, in his spirit, you know, I've been playing with this idea and I, I, I promise to um, comment on this more in the future as I parse this out. Um, family. <clears throat> For some years, I have been steeped in um, wisdom coming from many of our prominent black elders. And there is a point of contention that I always wondered about. And that point of contention is, does being pro-black mean being anti-white? We have watched as black folks, according to Francis Chris Welsing's theory, we have watched as white folks have built their self-image, their self-worth, their self-perception on the backs of degrading non-white people. We have watched what that has not only done to the world, but we have watched what it has done to us. As I have spoken many of the words that I've spoken over the last three or four years, I have routinely directed my comments towards black folks and uh, spoken about uh, the angst, even when I didn't directly speak about it, the angst that I had towards white society and white people in general, the damage they had done to the black community, the damage they had done to me. In many instances, when I look back at these videos, I am beyond proud of them. They are powerful, they are true, they are righteous. In some instances, I question if my mental perceptions, uh, the pain that I felt, because I was discriminated against, because I experienced racism, if that pain colored the comments that I made on the video. Sometimes I have to admit it is a like it is a possibility, if not a likelihood, that that indeed did happen. But also I have to admit as I sit with the ancestors in um, really observing these things, that these comments were nonetheless true. There is a sifting happening at the moment. There is a positive sifting happen, happening. Those who are built to be soulless, or those who have failed to and refused to retrieve their innate power to grow their soul in order, um, uh, in order to facilitate a growth beyond uh, mankind status, or man, or I'm sorry, mankind does not have souls beyond man status into the human category. 
they are being sifted out so that the human-based society which is desperately needed which this planet is desperately crying out for can come into existence because because our shared experience has been linked with in a very um, disturbing and destructive fashion to the white community many of the descriptions I used were based on that pain that hurt uh, and that in those issues that stated I do not believe being pro-black means being anti-white as the Hopi tell us white people have a role on this planet now I do know there are uh, traditions in Africa which suggest uh, that there are uh, white people who are destructive to the planet I do believe that I do believe that in fact I know it and those are the ones that are being sifted out they're being revealed right now but it is important especially as I move forward because um, there is going to be immense changes coming uh, next year in the stuff that I'm going to be talking about and the vision that I'm going to be projecting forward um, it is important that we understand that I am not anti-white at the end of the day that does me no good that does you no good that does the society or the world no good the advanced conversations that I'll begin having most likely next year with you will be about fundamental universal principles concepts and ideas that are meant to build from a black perspective outward a more just society and a more just world from Africa we can we can retrieve the necessary wisdom to restructure this world the challenge that lays in us as black people who have gone through a horrific horrific slate of events in this country is whether we will mature enough to take the wisdom that is available in Africa and to remold the society with it it is clear to me that Malcolm Martin and many other black leaders from the 60s and 70s this is the ultimate goal and aim that they had recently I heard and this was actually last summer and you will get to hear it too just not yet I heard a interview with I believe Asa Hilliard who uh, laid before the feet of black people in this country and I'm very cautious not to say black Americans because the meaning for America uh, as laid out by our indigenous brothers and sisters is twofold it actually uh, breaks down to mean ame uh, the love of rika riches so black America means blacks love of riches we don't want that we have to go deeper and higher um, but he laid at the feet of us black people in this 
here, America, uh, this country, laid at our feet the challenge to teach the world how to be human. He laid at our feet the challenge to teach the world how to be human. That is a powerful, powerful challenge coming from one of our foremost elders. We must teach the world how to be human. This does not mean that we negate and ignore <clears throat> other cultures and their contributions, their ideas, their advancements. That doesn't mean that we ignore them. It means that we collect them, we study them, and when we find something that enables us to grow, to another level, we implement it. This also does not mean that we take for granted the obvious divine favoritism that we have been given in order to fulfill such a noble, noble challenge. We must embody that divine favorit favoritism so we must so we can should i say ensure that the world is favorited in his challenge is an even greater challenge in order in order to become teachers capable of showing humanity, all the world, how to be a human, we must not be not only become human ourselves, but we must become human at such a level that the rest of the world will take notice and say, we must, must follow them. Martin Luther King started the process towards this end. It is clear that he started the process towards this end. So for that reason, next year, possibly before then, but definitely next year, I will start to talk a lot more about him and his teachings. We have a lot to do to take our rightful place at the head of humanity's table. We haven't earned the right to lead humanity yet because so many false strands have kept us away from our rightful destiny. But, and I give credit here to Lisa Cabrera for this, Neowise, Neo Wise, the great comet that appears every 6,766 years, roughly, is passing through our world's vision point currently. We'll be able to see it many times until uh, I believe the beginning of September. The last time, Ms. Cabrera pointed out, this comet traversed our planet's vision point. White people were handed the reins of control over this planet. Its appearance now, which they supposedly just discovered, I can believe that. For not everything the ancients observed was protected and preserved. Uh, now, with it coming into our vision point again, 
it is clear that there is about to be a transition. I have stated many times before that the coming 20 years will bring about our rulership over this planet. The question, two questions that must be answered before we get to that point is one, how hard will those who have been in power make the transition? And two, how hard will we fight our new found position? To the first question. It is clear they are fighting it and they will continue to fight it. And they will make a mockery of the divine plan in their attempts to try to remain at the head. But it will fail. The question is what state will the world be in when it does fail? To the second question. We are seeing, and I knew something was up when I started seeing this. We are seeing corporations, we are seeing businesses, we are seeing towns and communities throughout the country and the world separate themselves from imperialist endeavors and imperialism as a cultural ruling ethos. We are seeing it. We are also seeing black folks make some demands for equality. Most are short. Most don't dig that far down because we don't know our power yet. But it will become apparent in the next few years. The question is, will we fight that power or will we accept it? There is a great struggle that is about to unfold in this country. I've been reviewing for the last couple of years, but tonight I've been reviewing astrological data pertaining to the middle portion of this decade. And no matter where I look, the statement always is true. There is a fight for the soul of this nation occurring in the middle part to late part of this decade. By 2029, it should be over. The question is, what will that fight look like? Astrologically, the last time when certain conjunctions came together, certain aspects came together, you saw the Civil War break out. You saw World War I break out. You saw World War II break out. Many, ind many indigenous traditions say there will be a war, the third great war, possibly, hopefully, the ancestors willing the last war. It'll last for roughly a little bit over two years. Baba Venga puts its duration at 777 uh, days. But in that time period, there will be much destruction, terrible destruction, including here on this continent. This is one reason why the ancestors have been working overtime to stop it. We have the mind state. We have the mind state to stop it. This is one reason why I'm coming out so forcefully 
and so deliberately saying pro-blackness does not equal anti-whiteness. Our minds, our minds set the tone on this planet. We cannot look at every white person as our enemy, no more than we can look at every black being as our friend. Our mind sets the tone on this planet, and that must be remembered. There is so much more that I want to say, but I will skip over it to reiterate this point. We have to teach the world to be human. But in order to teach the world to be human, we must figure out what it means to be human. There is a lot going on underneath the surfaces of our communities that we don't see and around us that we don't see. And that's going to have to change. We have to start thinking in terms of creating systems, creating concepts that allow us to meet the needs of our communities. Think about this. If instead of worrying about a national organization, we have a group, a dedicated group of 50 to 100 to maybe 200 people who are worried and concerned about meeting the needs, granted you need more in a larger community, meeting the needs of say 20,000 people, 10,000 people, we'll say 200 per 10,000. That's half, that's, that's half the battle there. You start taking care of the people at that level, you don't need a national organization. All you need to do is reproduce that structure over and over and over again around you. This was the beauty of the Black Panther Party. They did that. Now it's our turn to do that. I am no longer going to speak in hostile manners that seek even if I don't believe they do, but I know they do, in some way, they seek to destroy. We must now seek to build. I will still tell the truth. I still hold fast to everything that I said because all of it is necessary to understand the deeper tensions. We have to understand the idea of the four strands, mankind, man, humankind, human, the four rays from black to red to yellow to white, how they interact. We must understand that. And we must now understand our greater call. A very small portion in the European lineage holds the necessary keys to impart a humanist, not in the philosophical sense that Europeans uh, use it as, but in the philosophical sense of just being human, the humanist principles onto Europe and that part of the world. We must develop that particle known as humanity and spread it across the world with viciousness. It is a seed after all. The great beauty of this is as we move in the direction of wanting to teach the world how to be human. The world will start to show us everywhere we can find the information 
in order to prepare ourselves to teach them how to be human. The heartbeat for the world is in Africa and it's about to awaken. The brain trust for the world is in Siberia. It is going through tragic changes because mankind's mistreatment of the planet has caused a horrific fever to break out throughout the land. And now the fever is reaching the head. We do not talk about the gut of the planet, but that too is in Africa. The heart may be found in Egypt. The gut in the Congo. There is so much coming. But are we ready? The commonwealth we will build will change the world. I knew that from the start. I knew it. But now I am sure of it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. I'm intrigued to know what you think about this, how you view it, what is your what is your uh, concepts around it. Let me know. I am your brother Vyamir Dees. Peace.